Call your father, man. Peace, family. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Ami Ami, and this is the 3%. We are going to do a commentary breakdown on the T's latest video, which was the ultimate clapback at the Carbonation Wives, Zoka, Malia, Aya, and Eferu. Those are the ones that are left. Y'all, I thought it would be interesting just to go through and commentate on these old videos. Um, shout out to the T. Shout out to the Carbonation Cult. Again, I am on neither side. Let's go ahead and get into the commentary. I want to give you, man. She wants you to take it. That's why you're not getting none. And I definitely wasn't even aware of my own abuse. Like, I wasn't aware of being coerced, you know. Uh, in my mind, it was like, you know, that's so sad. I said no there was him. probably this sense you know, of loyalty like, too. Like, if I, I say no, I'm going against my higher so. self. You know, because they look at him as God. So, who wants to say no to God, right? Uh, you know, he'd always say, "You belong to me. Your soul belongs to me." And so he, he could kind of, it's like he could just walk in a room any night he choose, and if you're sleeping in there. He can wake you up and say, come on. I can you see know? that. That was just like rule. Like it was just like he could do whatever he wanted to do. If you're in the bathroom, just minding your business, he can walk in there and do whatever he wants to do. It was like while we were saying the only enemy is yourself. No, 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 no. We made other people the enemy. Every time somebody left, we made them the enemy. We told Velvet she was wrong. We told Denise she was wrong for leaving. We told so many people they were wrong for leaving when we were wrong for staying. <laughs> we told Janae she was wrong for going to the police when she was absolutely right. She went to the police for all of us when you think about it. She was absolutely right. And I don't think that statement right there could be stressed enough. Like, I feel Kenya when she says that. Like, she really means that. Like, Janae, she went to the feds for us. You know, she took this man down for us, regardless of how we feel. You know, this is out of the horse's mouth, out of someone that was in the actual cult. Like, these people that have left, they're thankful for um, the move that Janae has made, whether we feel like it's just or not. At the end of the day, real shit, we were not there. Thank her so much. Because I, I really have my life back, you know. And my son, look at him, he's laughing, having fun. You know, he gets to be. And that's that's very important to me. Um, Excuse myself. There's a, um, there's a, there's a, there was an essence of love when I went back. And that's why I stayed because I thought he loved me and I thought they loved me and I thought they wanted me back because they showed me compassion. You know, he showed me compassion. They made me a spiritual bath. Fufu, um, Eferu, which is gone, she goes by a shell right now. She's the one that actually invited me back. Personally, She's feel like Alihia only back. brought her back to um, torture her visit. because of the shit she pulled with TKL. And I just leave, honestly. I didn't think that I was going to stay. And the reason why I stayed is because, you know, I missed my family. I really did miss them really bad. I missed them so bad. Take your time, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed them so bad, and I wanted them to know that. And I'm and I saw the magic in me healing. Like I said before, I wasn't lying when I got online, and I told everybody that I wanted to testify that this man healed. Um, I wanted to testify that he helped heal me because I was in a very, very low space. I was just coming back from being very toxic to myself. 
you know, doing what I was doing in Chicago and all these other things. And I, I went back and I didn't realize how much I missed him until I got in his presence. And I was shaking really bad. I was shaking really, really bad. Because I didn't know, I just, I didn't know really why I was there. I just know my soul told me to go. So when I went, I, I spoke with him. I, I, I reconciled and, and I, and I had, and I had to tell him like, look, like I never really wanted to like lose y'all. I never really wanted to leave. I just. I will say that nature boy is very forgiving you know, because if she I pulled that shit on me. But, you know, to, like, uh, yeah, she wouldn't have been back in my presence. So, you know, there's definitely a level of, you know, being naive here that I can't, you know, I can't at this time relate with. But I've definitely been there. Like, I've been there, like having that mindset, being young minded and just wanting love outside of myself. But, you know, you come to a point as a young lady growing into a grown woman and realizing that love comes from within. You can't seek love outside of yourself. And when you do, you get led into situations like this. And um, he was talking sweetly to me, telling me, oh, I changed now. And the weed changed me. Ain't it different now? And I was like, yeah, it does feel different. It feels like, oh, <laughs> Did she just say he said the weed changed yeah, him? I'm going to need him to pipe the fuck down. That weed made him even more of a maniac than he ever has been. The fuck? You change me. You can make me a better man. All this shit. And I fell for it. Duh. Of course, I fell for it. He knows how to speak to me. You know, so... That's why I stayed. I thought my presence would be appreciated. I appreciate I appreciated them greatly for helping me get back to a natural state. I was wearing weave and eyelashes and nails and didn't really love my natural state again. And then I got back with them and I stripped down and within three days, you know, I you know, I was back to me again. And I'm like, yo, I wanna testify. I wanna tell everybody how you helped me because I see a, a better you. But the more I stayed there, I seen that nothing really had changed. She was just reeling me in. I'm going to be real. At this at this moment, like, did, did Janae realize that this was insanity? Because, you know, you went back to this man who's running a cult, a, a malicious cult at that, okay? And given the things that he's shown you in the past the way he's treated you the woman around you you have went online testifying about how he's beaten women and starved women and done this and that and you go back to it thinking that he it he changed because of weed you know there has to be a point you know janae you got to sit and stop and listen listen to that like i hope you've replayed that and you know realize how crazy that does sound like even to someone that is brainwashed like the weed changed you how so so i I, i'm dumb for i'm dumb for like you know believing that he could have changed that part i'm dumb for believing that he was this better man that he was telling me that he was but he wasn't and and for the pat and the, the first three days and i'm gonna end it at this point the first three days i was there i wasn't online because I didn't want no one to see me. I didn't want no one to be questioning me and all this other stuff. I just, I, all I knew was, and I wanted to know. I get that because everyone's seen you slandering his name and then you're back in the cult. Like I wouldn't even went back. Like it was just, it was a dumb move from the start. You feel me? And I'm not, please don't think that I'm hitting, hinting, you know, for the people that do believe that, you know, um, the R.A.P.E., happen you know i'm not saying i'm not defending nature boy in any matter i'm just literally just combing through the words that are being said and giving my commentary okay i do want to make that very clear um i do not play when it comes to the r-a-p-e word um as i am a victim as well ashe sure if this is what i wanted to do and and commit to that and i was like you know what i'm gonna commit to it Everybody's saying I can't commit to this, I can't commit to that. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna prove them wrong, 
and I'm going to stay with y'all and I'm going to testify and I'm going to proclaim the kingdom of God and I'm going to tell them that this information is the true information. I'm going to tell them that this is what brought me back to a natural state. This is what made me go get back into my self-love. This is what me stopped me from self-sabotaging myself by going back out there and doing what I was doing, defiling my body. But now I look like a fool because it wasn't real. It was all an illusion. Goes by Captain Ace, says he's part of the group Carbon Nation. Ace calls Bishop the head of the international organization. This is one of the most troubling experiences I've ever had. The man Y'all look how to his nature boy, puffy boy as God. Solar State, like look how sick he looks. Everyone looks sick and how the women are still in submission even while he's gone. They're still looking down at the ground if you notice every right now. It's it's sad. It's so sad. They look to Alihio, you know, to raise them, to give them knowledge, to teach them, to show them the way. Mm -hmm. He is teaching them that it is okay to beat on your women. Mm -hmm. Right. You have women there that has never been touched by their husband until they seen Alihio put his hands on his women. Mm. It's not okay. It's not okay. I gotta say, the, the universe is making me do it. Like, mm -hmm. Solar, he put his hands on Zoka. Mm. She's pregnant. Fuck wrong with you. Come on, man. You all right? But then can we blame him? The man that he looks up to is, is, is telling him and showing him that this is okay. Yeah, exactly. It's not okay. It is not okay. Pregnant or not, you should not be putting your hands on a woman. What are you doing? Perpetuating the same generational curses that we're trying to fucking break. Mm -hmm. And women, it's not okay to put your hands on your man. It's yeah. not okay to put your hands on your man, but I, besides Nana, don't know woman put their hand on their man there. Mm -hmm. Boomy <laughs> put his hands on his wife. Mm. According to Sunflower, he never did that shit until he got the carbonation. Speak, girl. Speak. It's not okay. Alihio put his hands on Nana and Malia. It is not okay. Mm -mm. It's not. To the point you can hear it in another other room and everybody's like, oh, they'll Fucking be okay. Fucking shit up, man. Every, every, it'll be okay. And no then the niggas, and bring, the no niggas think it it's okay. They telling us not chill. Everything gonna be all right. Baba G got it. He know what he doing. What? You know what? And you know what? Zoka tried to call him out on it because the baby, you know, was inside. So the baby got involved. And the thing is like, you don't, you don't. The baby got involved. And to where as though she has scratches on her face, on her back, on her arms. Am I hearing this correctly? The baby was marked up due to this fight? The the, the child, Eliana, the baby? Am, am I hearing this right? Marks on her back and stuff? Were any of you guys around during this time? Do you guys have the video? That's insane. Like what? Because they can't control themselves. The least you could have did was put the fucking baby out the room. Which they did. But they didn't do that until she was hurt. And the thing is, like when you when someone tried to call him on her shit, he said, Mind your business. Fourth of July? Yeah. When he beat the shit out of Nana? Hmm. Okay. I keep so hearing about this 4th of July, y'all. Right, so I was not around during this time. I keep hearing about it, though. We walked to the park. All of us. We walked to the park. And it's a full moon. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We looking up at the sky, looking at the moon. It was beautiful. Nice-ass vibe. But Alihio, flirting with the other women. Nana gets upset. She doesn't like him flirting with other women. So, it gets to a point when he start talking, and he's, he, he, he like to talk. So he gets to talking, I don't remember what he was talking about, but he got us all standing around him while he talking. He drunk as shit. It's another thing. Margaritas. He need to stop fucking drinking. Tequila. My nigga, you already said that that's one of your demons. You already said that in Babylon, you couldn't drink because you didn't know how to fucking control yourself. Anyway, yeah, he was drinking. Patron. 
And he looks at Nana and he like, what's up with you? She says, nothing. He was like, nah, you got something on your mind, talk. She was like, nothing. So he keep asking her, she keeps saying nothing. He ends up walking up to her. And I don't know, it's like he reached for her or something and she did like this, like to wipe his hand away. So he grabs her by her neck and slams her on the fucking I'm ground. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. Everyone that was there in that moment, I'm really trying to imagine and picture even the scenario and how it happened, how she's explaining, because she's explaining it in, in very great detail. And I'm really trying to understand, like, and don't get me wrong, I understand these people are uh, were under a spell, are under a spell, but no one... No one even said any, no one said chief, no, nobody yelled out anything. Everyone just stood there in formation and in submission while he did this. Like that's, that's, that's tough. That's, that's tough. Furthermore, this is just showing how much power Lihio does have over these people that they would just stand there you know and go against their human instinct which is to help defend protect make us all get in a circle around them so can't nobody see what the fuck is going on he continuously slamming on the ground smacking her in her face choking her until she can't fucking breathe talking about yeah yeah i'm the one that gives you life i'm the one that lets you breathe this shit went on for hours. That's crazy. To where as though he made us, he ended us, he ended up taking her out the circle. All the way down to the end of the park. All the way down to the end of the park to keep doing it. And laid on top Keep of her. beating her ass. ass and then laid his big ass on top of her. Then started crying, please don't leave me. Bitch, what? Hold up. Wait a fucking minute. This shit just sounds too fucking familiar. Quick story time. My son's father beat the fuck out of me once so bad, y'all. I was pregnant at the time so bad that I blacked out and I woke up in the shower with the water running over me. Him trying to wake me up and shit. I love you. I love you. Please wake up. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Nigga, you just beat my ass to death literally like i just came back alive hi nice to meet you but love bombing me after i come back a lot alive like motherfuckers is sick like there is this like that's sick wow wow <laughs> what fuck out of here it's not okay then we get up and we go back to the house like shit ain't never happened. Shorty dress ripped. Nice ass dress. Blood on her scarf. Scratches and shit all on her face. It's not that Nana don't want to leave this time, y'all. She's scared. She's scared that nigga going to fucking kill her. Because he said it. Now... He keeps saying it's because of his daughter. He keeps saying, I don't want to lose my daughter. Stop telling us to go to the police. We don't fuck with the police. You don't want to lose your daughter. You, clearly, you do want to lose your daughter. Because if you didn't want to lose your daughter, you wouldn't be acting the way that you're acting. Mm -hmm. This behavior. Got to stop. Got to. And that's the thing, what it is. It's not just mentally abusing. There's physical abuse being going on in there. Exactly. So that's why it needs to be dismembered. That's why it needs to be disbanded. That's why it needs to be revised. Shut the fuck if you've down. Never, if you've he beat me that day and he made the men tighten up the circle and everybody watched. And by the end of the beating, I was practically naked in, in, the, in the middle of that circle. And um, that was something that I had to deal with moving forward in carbonation. And I was very embarrassed about that. And I knew people did not look at me at the same at that moment. And I, you know, I at that point, I was just trying to be there 
for the sake of my daughter to see if it could work out to have a relationship with her father. And it just got worse and worse. Every moment that rolled by, it just got worse and worse. So every time I would uh, not want to agree with how he wanted to live and what he wanted to do, uh, it became very physically abusive. He would hit me in my face. He would choke me out. He would punch me. He would kick me. Um, he would scream at me. Uh, he would slap me. Uh, any anything anything he could do he would do so that you know he could have full control over my mind he would and, literally um, revert into scared. a little child the again it sounds like I, went back, I became like mentally disturbed at that point of like why would he even want to treat me that way because I didn't I'm not here to harm nobody. I'm not here to like take nothing away from you. I just want to make the situation better because we have a daughter together. And why wouldn't you want to make the situation good for our daughter? Like after after that beating, you know, I really just couldn't I couldn't turn that off. That hurted me so bad that from that from that day I had started to plan my escape. And when I started to plan my escape, it, it it just didn't go well. Because if I had showed any sign of leaving or any sign of not wanting to be around him, he was going to physically abuse me. And he did. You know, it, it got to the point where at the end, um, he just, you know, threatened to hit me. And I was like, no, I don't. You know, I don't want to get hit. So I had to suppress how I felt. I had to suppress my worries and my doubts and everything. And I just, I just kept moving on to proceed with my escape. And this was a couple months later because he had took my documents. Like, he says that he makes it easy for people to leave and... He makes it easy for people to just walk away. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Anybody who's there who wants to leave, they have to ask him for permission to leave. And when they ask him for permission to leave, it's a it's a speech, a day long speech, if not two days long of a speech to coerce them into staying so that he can have control over all of the people. And, and, and what all of these people do is they wind up sneaking away you know so eventually to, to backtrack to the, the you know me planning my escape when i was in cali he confiscated all of my documents it's going to be very interesting to see the defense nature boy's defense and how they're going to try and negate the things that have happened here i mean everything that velvet just explained sounds very much like coercion r-a-e-p um, you know, withholding documents, um, being, you know, held against your will as well. So, I don't know. The bitch know what the fuck it is. Tell these people what it is. Look tell at her face. She don't need to tell us nothing. We see what yeah, it is. Like... You know you're trying to make these people feel Look sorry. Look at her for you. face. Ain't nobody feeling sorry for you, motherfucker. You here because you begged to be here, bitch. I ain't actually come here. You came here on your motherfucking own, ho. Fuck out of here, bitch. Yeah, I'm abusing the bitch. Now come do something about save dog. Save her. Stupid motherfucker. Save this whore. Save her. You stupid bitch. Now, now act up out this bitch. I'll show off on you. Malia, leave. Do you want to leave, Malia? Tell them what happened if you leave here. You'll go crazy, won't you? Yeah. Tell them who Baba G is. God. Tell them. Baba G is God. Now confess it. Proclaim it. Tell these bitches on this motherfucking live who I am. Baba G is God. With due emphasis. Tell them who I am. And I don't give a fuck who record this bitch, I'm God. The black man is God. He said to her, get on your knees right fucking now, like flat on your face, right? 
and she gets on her knees and literally puts her head on the ground. Let me make sure this is not about to die because this is important. All right, okay. Which she thought that she was she was following the right orders, like you know, put my head on the ground. He said, no, put your head flat on the fucking ground, right? She put her whole body flat on the ground, right? What he did after that, he kicked her in the stomach. I mean, kicked her in the stomach, like, while she was on the ground like that. He said, this is what you get. Look at you. You hit yourself. Now, tell me. I'm there. Because he's my, I've I gave my energy to him in in that moment, and he's my teacher, and that's my role model, father figure. I'm just sitting there like it's okay. Uh, she she's a woman. She's acting up right now, and her man is disciplining her. But that's fucking wrong, bro. The women and men who belong to the organization called Carbonation believe their leader, 40-year-old Eligio Bishop, is literally God. And they insist he should never have been arrested by DeKalb County Police Wednesday night at this home. They say he rents here on Arbor Trace near La Vista Road. They were all here when police showed up unexpectedly. This is a revolving door and you can come in and out as you please. No one is being no no one is gonna hold you against your will here. Attitude in her face. And let me tell you, right there is when a bitch would have had to get her ass fucking whooped. That's that's where a bitch would have had to get her ass whooped. Fuck with me, just to let y'all know that. Like, we we ain't doing that over runs, here. Smack me if you want to, bitch. She tried to leave, and she was attacked. Um, and she was forced to stay. That is an actual fact. She was beaten for leaving. As he would say, he's putting her in her place, disciplining her. She was out of line. She embarrassed him online. She walked away in front of all those people online. So he had to check her, as he would call it, right? Eventually, she gets completely exhausted and tired of the abuse. And even though she's totally brainwashed and she doesn't have her mind and she does not control, he has told her over and over again, though, if she tries to leave, that he will kill her. He says that he will kill her and bury her in the jungle and tell everyone that she left and they don't know where she is. These are his words verbatim. So not only has he threatened her life, she's afraid to leave. When she tries to leave, she gets beaten for it. And he tells her, we'll just kill you and bury you. This is not something that is entertainment or a joke. This is not something that can be taken lightly. Now, I do see this being one of the questions or one of the videos being shown. And, um, you know, maybe like Sam Malia will be, say Malia was on the stand. I feel like this is, you know, something that will be brought up and that she would have to speak on in court, you know. On one hand, you say he's so loving, he's so kind, he wouldn't hurt a fly. But we see, we've see, we seen the abuse, so you guys are trying to, you know, or expecting us to be insane with you all, you know. Um, we're not under the same veil that you all are on. So I just, I just find that interesting. I wonder how this will go, you know, if brought up in court. What I'm seeing, obviously, because he is on a public platform, that we just got that little itsy bitsy glimpse. And you guys now get to see what I've been saying to you and what everybody else has been speaking on after they leave there. But you think you have some man in your face throwing his penis around and, and dancing, being some stripper, telling he telling you he's his your, your, he's your messiah. Meanwhile, I think this is a good place to stop for the first video now. This is very significant to me. Sorry, y'all. Y'all might hear some, the frying in the background. I got some homemade potatoes going. But 
Sybil says something very significant. She's talking about, you know, you think this man is your messiah. You know, he's stripping in front of you. You know, it's the finesse, y'all. I mean, imagine just being in a setting with a man as such. Not necessarily this man, but a man of his stature, of his charisma, of his sex appeal. He's telling you he's the messiah. He's coming with all this divine knowledge, you know, knowledge never spoken of before, even though it's just regurgitated shit. But, you know, just imagine the mind state that these women are in. They've been woed in so many ways. Like, it's crazy. So many layers to this shit. Um, I do have to end the video now because I got some mommy duties I got to attend to before I go to work. Now, listen, listen, we will be back with a part two. This will probably definitely take like four parts. Um, let me know y'all thoughts, comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe. I can't talk. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank y'all so much for watching. And until next time. Bye.